Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of Aperitif with Kumar at the Hilton Colombo, our host hotel. My guest today on the show is the first ever woman president of the Royal Turf Club New Aurelia and the first such position in Asia. She's also the managing director of the Asian Aviation Centre. A woman who's broken all barriers both in her personal and professional life. Nihara Jatilika Raptam. Nihara, good evening. Good Thank evening. you very much for accepting my invitation to be on, on the show. Thank you. So, congratulations, the first ever woman president of the Royal Turf Club uh, in Asia as well, and uh, a, a woman in engineering and flight. Now, tell me, what is the connection between Nihara and horses to start with? Horses and I go back a long way uh, because I've, since my small days, I've been so keen on horses and flying and dancing. I think those are the three things that I've always uh, been passionate about. So my first experience of horses was that I used to watch the police horses and I used to love them. And uh, I had a funny experience when I was four years old. I got onto a, by mistake, I got onto a goat thinking a goat. it was a, <laughs> thinking it was a foal because at four years old, I didn't know the difference. Uh, of course, I have about eight stitches on my knees uh, to, to, um, to account for it. So that's how my uh, passion started. I've always been in love with horses and then subsequently went into riding. I think one of the first females to start really riding. And I did a horse ride to Jaffna in 2002. Did uh, I did a horse ride to Jaffna with another British girl, which took us uh, four days, uh, four nights, five days. Actually, we started from Vaunia to Jaffna. Uh, it was called the Peace for Children, where we collected a uh, lot of things um, for the kids of the North because they did not have, uh, you know, the bare essentials. So I, well, that is my experience and love for the horses because I thought people in the North also, kids have never seen a horse, let alone a Sinhalese. So I thought that to combine both. So you now as the first ever woman president of the Royal Turf Club, Nurelia, what journey have you planned ahead for the club in your tenure of office as president? Well, it was actually a surprise for me because I did not know this was, that I was the first president. And uh, it was uh, Wayne Wood, who is our CEO of the club, who's, who's an Australian, who mentioned this. And uh, we had planned on a lot of things, you know, a lot of activities uh, to bring up the, the horse community in Nuharelia, especially because we go as Royal Turf Club of Nuharelia. So uh, the main idea was whilst uh, encouraging and, you know, reactivating the almost dying uh, horse racing platform to in, up, up grade and uplift the society around Nuarelia because they de they're so dependent on on horse racing you know horse riding but if you go to Nuarelia you see that the people are always you know around everything happens around horses mate so so that was the idea but unfortunately this covid situation now talking of society there is it over season april or is it throughout the year? Uh, well, mostly April, but that is when April is the season where Colombo and suburbs, you know, especially migrate to New Aurelia. But other than that, horse riding as a leisure activity is it does always happen throughout yes, the year. It does happen. And anybody who goes to New Aurelia will always experience that. They will want to, you know, try out, go for a ride. That's part and parcel of New Aurelia's culture. So if one does not own a horse, can one go to Nurelia and in a sense hire a horse? Yes, you can hire a horse. There's always, right now, there is a possibility that you can co-own horses. That means you, you can get together with two or three or four people and buy a horse and some of the stables will maintain and train it for you so that when you go, you can always use them whenever you like. Uh, you ride as well. I ride as well. Racing or pleasure? Um, mostly pleasure, but I did take part in one race. Um, I think that was in 2002 or 2003, where there was a race on a beach race organized by the Prem Das Riding Club, where there was a separate female race, first ever female race, and there were four uh, ladies. I was only Sri Lankan. 
and um, yeah it it was a fantastic experience do you wear spectacles and still wish you can wear sunglasses with prescription sunglasses from vision care your vision correction requirements are met and you still look good and cool in the sun as sri lanka's market leader in eye care vision care is all over the country 60 branches across all major cities so think of eye care think of vision care now when you're up on the saddle there up there racing what goes across your mind fear risk exhilaration adrenaline what hell of an ad adrenaline rush a adrenaline rush enormous adrenaline rush in a positive uh, sense or in a, in a positive fearful sense it, in a positive sense if you're fearful if you're a person who's fearful then maybe it's not for you but i've always been adventurous so for me it was something that i look forward to and i will do it again if i have the chance um it's overcoming your fears you know how confident you are because uh, you know it's not like riding a bike or a motorcycle or a racing car it's you have total control there but when you're riding a horse it's a live being which is very intelligent which picks up your uh, which picks up your moods and fears uh, so it it's very much attuned to you, to you so if you are fearless then the horse knows that you are in control so it, it's it's a it's a very confidence building exercise even for the small children um, to start riding a horse is one of the best things in life So what if the horse senses that you are nervous that you're fidgety up there then <laughs> well, what happens he'll try to take the upper hand <laughs> it has happened to me i i've they put me down a couple of times but hey you just dust yourself get up give a shot and get on the fellow and go that's how you control then you show the horse i am the boss what kind of legacy do you think you want to leave behind when you relinquish duties as the first ever woman president of the Royal Turf Club New Delhi. Well, my my main thing was that with the CEO and the committee members we wanted to sort of really improve the standards of the uh, turf club, the horse racing community as as well and the families that live around, you know, because they they've had a very bad uh, uh, sort of uh, I won't say bad but not a great life uh, so in the community in the community you know i would have loved to have uh, uplifted their life how dependent is the community around you in norelia on the club well they are whatever the club that is that comes into the norelia or takes over the near the norelia turf club um, they would be greatly dependent on them because it, that that is that is what keeps their livelihood We now move on to the Asian Aviation Center of which Nihara is managing director and her husband Chandran is chairman CEO. Now uh flying engineering and Nihara what is that connection? As I said flying is also one of my passions has been always one of my passions. So when I got married to Chandran and uh, then subsequently he wanted me to take over the management because marketing is my background. uh he said listen if you're going to boss the pilots you better talk their language and uh, learn what how to boss the pilots so then i took up flying and um i have been flying since since then um i've done my solos uh, and of course i have to sit for the exams and get the uh, private pilot's license so you walk the talk i you know what you're doing <laughs> i like to think so yes Um what is it that makes the Asian Aviation Center unique and different in terms of your operations and your offering to okay, students Okay we are the only academy that has both the flying as well as the engineering academies both flying both and engineering both flying and engineering we in fact we just started the cabin crew uh, program as well so that we like to complete the whole package and we've been in operation for 35 years nobody can boast that Uh, continuously yes yes continuously even during the war and so on and so forth and uh, most of the sri lankan airlines pilots uh, have be, been our students uh, if you go to uh, the middle east you see so many of our pilots 
many of our engineering engineers so we've uh, done a significant contribution to the economy of this country and um, i must say that uh, uh, we are considered one of the best in the industry because we also have a uh, affiliation with kingston university of the uk where they study two years with us last year they go to the uk and they come out as aerospace engineers aerospace engineers, aerospace okay. engineers. and some of them work for boeing and so on the, one of the students has a has a patent with boeing there's another student who is doing the rover project with the mars uh, mars uh, project so we have uh, sort of we have educated and put out many students who are doing extremely well uh, in the aviation industry and i don't think many people can can boast like that and we have the best uh, lecture panel um, very well experienced this was chandran's brainchild um yes and and a team of uh, aviation experts who uh, who uh, so of its 35 years how many years have you been in charge i've been in charge since 2007 um have you had downs in this you know there's been the war there's been east bombings there's been covid so have you all taken a dip in in student enrollments and registrations yes i think everybody has the war did affect us uh, tremendously because with the war came certain uh, certain restrictions regulations so it did take a, a huge hit and then when we were trying to recover came the the east bombing Uh, then when we were about to recover again this episode but i i think that that most people have gone through that so i think that the challenge is to meet it head on uh, chandran and i are very confident that we will somehow you know can can overcome this uh, because if you give a good product then at the end that is what matters and chandran always says that although he is uh, chairman ceo you call the shots he lets you <laughs> run the show uh, as md yes yes because he's he mostly concentrates on the film side of it and he's not too technical technically competent on on the flying side so i uh, do uh, do call the shots as you say but i have a fantastic team behind me is your asian aviation center also um, a forex earner for the sri lankan economy it was it was a huge forex center the past sale. tense there because since the war and especially the then subsequently the east bombing things have become very difficult for the foreign students because we used to have many indians pakistanis even from the middle east and even from africa and if we can actually uh, make it easier for the for the foreigners to come in that will be a huge um, money on it listen don't forget that with the with the uh, september 11th uh, attacks most most people can't go to the us to study especially when it comes to flying so we have a huge market here and there is a demand we just have to harness that that's all so on that note of hope that there are more students from overseas coming to sri lanka to work uh, to to study with you all uh, and bring in more forex to the country uh, we bring uh, part 1 chat 1 to a close Uh, with my guest Nihara Jayathilakka, the first ever uh, first ever woman president of the of the Royal Turf Club and the MD of the Asian Aviation Centre. This has been a chat on work on profession. Uh, we meet you. We meet her again in chat two, all about life and living. So thank you very much to my host hotel, the Hilton Colombo, and hair and beard partner Ramani Fernando Salons for being a part of the show. We catch you soon, part two, very soon of the show.